Welcome Tech Brothers Zamir. In this video, we are going to learn how to query CSV, Parquet or JSON files in ADLS2 with serverless SQL pools in the Synapse. So let's go ahead and here we have our blob storage and you can see right there we have a container called input. So in the end of the Synapse container we have an input folder right there. So as of now I don't have any files here. I can simply upload files here if I would like and then I can go to my download folder here and I can upload these files. This is one way of uploading the files. And other way to upload those these files, you can go to Synapse and here you can go to the, let's say you are on the home, then you will be going to the data and then you will be going to the linked. In the linked, uh, this is the link to our Synapse container. That's the same uh, ADLS2 uh, that we just saw right here. That's our storage. So it is a link there and we can click right there and you can see the input folder. So under the input folder, I don't have much here. I can go and upload these files and I'm gonna click right there and select these three files. So I have CSV file and JSON file and then I have a Parquet file. Let's upload these files and now we are all set. Here what we can do, we can simply click right here, let's say on this one and then it will uh, give us this option and we say new SQL script uh, and select top uh, 100 rows. Uh, that's one way to write your code and it's going to use the open row set uh, and uh, then you have bulk uh, and here is the path for your file. Uh, and uh, then you provide uh, the format uh, parser version and uh, then uh, uh, you say as a result, so, you know, so this is a kind of your inner query inside the open row set uh, and that's the name you have given to this uh, uh, result set. Uh, now and uh, then it's going to select a star from uh, select the top 100 asterisk so select all the uh, columns uh, from whatever this uh, data will be returned. Now that's one way but I'm going to close this and uh, I have written already code and I'm going to show you. So we will go to the develop and here you will say uh, this plus sign and then you click on a SQL script. That's uh, Oh, that will create your new SQL script right there. Uh, you can uh, save this script. Uh, so just by publishing it, it will save. I have already saved it right here. And uh, that's for the file we are going to use. Uh, so the very first, uh, we will be querying CSV file. And uh, then uh, you will say select asterisk. Same query that we have uh, seen in the last when I right click and uh, say read top 100 rows. Uh, so select asterisk from open row set. Uh, I will say maybe my files have only 5, 10 records, no big deal. But if you have large amount of records, you will always uh, want to go with the select top maybe 1000 or 100 or whatever your need is. Uh, then you have bulk and here is the path of that file. Then you have format CSV and header row is equal to true. And here I provided parser version equal to 2.0. This enables improved CSV parsing in Synapse serverless with better support for coded fields, special characters and some edge cases. Now that's good and then I call this as rows. Now we can uh, simply execute this, but how did I get this uh, path uh, for this file? Uh, so let me take you back to the our Synapse uh, uh, container here and then uh, we are inside this uh, input uh, folder and here is my CSV. So I can simply select here and then go to more and then uh, click on properties and uh, here it is going to give me URL. So you see the name of the file and in the folder and then uh, we can uh, get the URL. So we can copy the URL and then use it wherever we need to use it. So that's exactly I did it here. So I just pasted the URL right there. So you can see that. Now as this query is ready and we can go simply execute. So we run it and you have seen that I have other queries in the same file, but I have selected this query. So it's going to only run that query. And now you can see that we have a ID as a header and name and uh, email then we have uh, three records in this uh, uh, file uh, that we have just read by using the serverless uh, um, SQL pool uh, as we have we see right here we are connected to the built-in that is our serverless SQL pool uh, now what we are going to do we are going to go ahead and read parquet file 
So here uh, we will say select the top and uh, then provide a number, maybe, you know, five, 10, whatever the records you want to read and asterisk from. So this will stay as is and then you have open row set, again bulk and then path of that file. So I know uh, I just showed you how you guys get that. So here is my parquet, parquet file and here you will go to more and uh, then select the properties uh, and uh, that's the path I have copied. So you are already well aware of that and then you just paste it and in the format you will say parquet. And then uh, you close these parentheses and uh, then uh, give some name. Maybe in this case, I don't want to say rows, I can call a table or, uh, you know, uh, file or whatever the name I want to give. Um, so once I execute, it's going to read my parquet file and give me all the records. Uh, see right there. So this is our header right there. And uh, then uh, these are the, are the records uh, we read from titanic.parquet file. Uh, now in this uh, next example, we are going to read uh, the JSON file. Uh, so that is kind of uh, actually, um, it is true we can read the JSON file uh, by using a uh, serverless uh, SQL uh, pool, uh, but not straightforward. Uh, so first of all, we have to read the file as CSV and then uh, we have to use uh, uh, this function here to get the values uh, from that uh, string. Uh, so it reads uh, this whole thing as a string and then uh, uh, we have to extract the values one by one. Now, how you do that? So first of all, uh, just uh, it is the same. Just forget about this part first. Let's start from here. So we have from open row set the same syntax we have. And then we have say bulk and here is the JSON uh, file path. And then we say format equal to CSV and it is going to read the, this entire CSV as a string right there. Then we have these uh, few parameters here and uh, then uh, these parameters actually do something really, really good in case of uh, CSVs. Uh, but we are setting uh, to the 0x, 0b, that means do nothing. And uh, if you see right there, this is the first parameter and it says uh, it is used to correct or used to wrap a field, uh, uh, example given like double quotes, uh, you know. And uh, using uh, 0x, uh, 0b, so no, nothing is treated as a coded. Again, uh, you have a field uh, terminator and here characters between uh, fields, uh, so such as a comma in the CSV, but using this, uh, so it is does not split the fields. Uh, and then you are saying a row terminator and the characters uh, to end the line uh, backslash n, uh, but uh, here using a 0x, 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 0b, to prevent normal line splitting. So we are using these different values for each of these parameter. So we are avoiding these all the things happen like don't split it, you know, no, no, new no new line and all that. And we are reading this as a CSV. So once we read a CSV, what we is going to give us, it's going to give us actually this uh, uh, JSON content. So we run this whole thing. I'm going to select the entire thing here. And then now we run it and now you can see that uh, right here, it has given us uh, the JSON content. Uh, from this entire JSON content, uh, we can read uh, each value or key value if you like. Uh, let's say if I want to read the customer ID or I want to read the name, then I can do that. Uh, so in that case, it is uh, already kind of given us uh, like, hey, you will say JSON of value, use this function right there and then uh, provide the JSON content uh, and then say dollar sign as then uh, you have a um, uh, period and then say customer ID. So use the customer ID from there. Then again, uh, for the other value, like um, you want to extract the name from here. So you will say dollar sign dot name as whatever the name you want to give for this column. So you can do that. Now, if we execute this and uh, what's going to happen, uh, uh, it's going to run and give us uh, the JSON content right here and also the columns right here that we just extracted. So how I came up with this query and uh, this is very simple. You go back to the this uh, uh, container where you, you have folder and then you have a JSON file. Right click on this one and say new SQL script and top 100 rows. So it already knows that this is JSON file and you see that it created the entire uh, query for you. So you don't have to, uh, you know, write it down by yourself, but uh, you can start from there. And but uh, these are the values that you have to add that later. So it is giving you JSON content uh, and uh, see uh, here, uh, if you run it, it's going to return you the JSON content. But uh, remember in the in my query, I have used uh, to extract uh, my customer ID and customer name. So you will be pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, 
you will be copying pasting this thing and uh, you will uh, let me just copy so you will copy and then say a comma here and paste right there and here let's say I want to say email okay so in this case uh, I will say dollar sign as email okay so now if we execute it's going to get us the JSON content and also email as a separate uh, column so that's how you will extract uh, the values from the JSON uh, string I thank you very much for watching this video and I will uh, put this uh, script in the description so you can use from there and I will see you guys in next video.